as we're still filing in, I want to thank everybody for being here, for Melody, for the family, for each other. We're going to watch a short video of photos of the different phases and the different reflections and the different beautiful expressions of Melody Bernstein. Melody loved to sing and to dance and to light up a room and to wear incredible clothing and to just simply glow. We're going to sing her back home. We're going to dance her back home. We're going to honor her uniqueness today. And because she loved to sing out loud and because we are blessed with the uniqueness of a Zoom memorial service where everyone but me is muted. And so those of you who have always held back, those of you who can't really carry a tune in the bucket like my beloved father upstairs, this is your moment because you can sing along with the chorus just as if you were singing with melody right now. Hallelujah, 
You have given us the life of melody, and now that life has been taken from us. What is a human being that you care about her? Well, the daughter of man and woman that you notice her, life is short. It often seems like a fleeting shadow, like the flower that blossoms in the day, dies in the night. So teach us, teach us, God, to make each day count and give us a heart filled with wisdom and love, like the heart of Melody Bernstein. Match our days of sorrow with joy for all the years that we live, because those who sow in tears, as the psalmist said, will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow in tears, will reap in joy, will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow, in tears they will reap, will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow, in tears will reap in joy, they will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow, in tears they will reap, they will reap. Joy. Hine Matov. How good it is. How good it is and important for every one of us here to be together right now through the miracle of cyberspace and Zoom. Somehow we're able to all connect right here together with one another and connect with Melody and her spirit with her family and her friends. Melody loved to dance. Hine Matov, I'm sure, was a particular opportunity to dance. And those of you, I know Oren is there, a, a, a true dancer who was in many different dance times with her. Oh, don't we love when that goes out of tune. So again, nobody's looking. Get up and dance if you feel like it, or just simply join in with Hine Matov. Hine Matov Manayim, Shevet Achim Gem Yachad. Hine Matov Manayim, Shevet Achim Gem Yachad. Hine Matov. Shevet achim gam yachad, hinei mato. Shevet achim gam yachad, hinei mato manayim. Shevet achim gam yachad, hinei mato manayim. Shevet achim gam yachad. He name my toe, he name my toe. Yeah, da da da, yeah, da 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 da. He name my toe, he name my toe. Yeah, da 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 da. He name my toe, my name. Shevet achim gam yacha. He name my toe, my name. Shevet Achim Gram Yachad 
ही महत्व Again, welcome here to comfort each other in a time of loss. But we're also here to celebrate, and we're here to guide Melody's soul on her way. And so, the last video that we have of her as a light worker was her lighting the candles on Hanukkah. And so, I ask if we can bring in Melody's voice now, lighting the Hanukkah candles. And because we all have vivid imaginations and because sometimes the keys on our keyboards and things stick, we may bring her in a little bit later. What I wanted to tell you, after all of the time I've spent with so many of you talking and hearing stories and looking at pictures and really getting a sense of how Melody moved in this world, one of her themes could have been let there be light, sunshine. Amen. We might be a long way from Hanukkah, but it was always a blessing for Melody to work in the light, to share light, to have a dog named Sunshine, to be Sunshine. So there are things that you might have heard from her, one of her favorite expressions. Some of you might have even grimaced at a little bit. You might have heard her say, my ass hurts over and over again. And yes, yes, Melody was unique. She strove towards sainthood. She was just a normal person. She dressed uniquely. She moved uniquely. Some people who are caregivers and who are nurturers, sometimes they ask first, would you like me to help you? And then there are just these incredibly passionate, dedicated souls who just jump right in and clean your aura. Even if you didn't know what cleaning your aura meant or didn't want your aura cleaned, Melody was there to give and to give for 33 years as an occupational therapist. And in addition to her paid work, she found connected to her Jewish roots, connected to her essence, her, her Torah, her mission on this earth to give and give and nourish and nurture. She found an organization that remarkably was tied to some great spiritual truths. And so she reached out and touched many different people. This is not going to be the only time that we talk about Melody, that we share stories about her, but it's a very special time when we come together in this way as a community of her family, her friends, her neighbors, her colleagues, honoring her by sharing our memories publicly and comforting each other. The thing about being a relative and a friend you know, it doesn't end. It doesn't end with age and it doesn't end with death. Melody will always be your cousin, your niece, your aunt. She will always be your friend and she will always love you. See, our lives, they're God's gift to us, but what we do with our life, that's a gift to God. Melody's work as an occupational therapist, as a healer, as someone who helped people get back into life, a wounded healer, for she had so many difficult physical situations to deal with. And still that never stopped her from reaching out, from touching someone and from lifting them up. 
So this afternoon, we celebrate Melody. We celebrate her. And I've always felt that no one came to hear the voice of the cantor or the rabbi. The most important voices to be heard at such a time are yours. And we have a number of people who have volunteered to be here to speak, to share their hearts about Melody. And I'm going to call them up in a few minutes. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about the people who were so wonderful and so very dedicated to Melody, just as she was to all the people she took care of. Renee, Nick, and Melissa. The five Aronson sisters, Naomi, Debbie, Terry, Judy, Jacqueline, and her SMBK group of friends. And special kavod, special honor to Sue Wechter and her late husband, Saul. Very, very good friends who helped Melody in so many ways. Kol HaKavod, the great honor and the great mitzvah that you have done by supporting your family, by supporting your dear friend mm -hmm. and your relative. So we talked, Sue and I, a lot about Melody's last few hours, few days, and we found out some truly remarkable things, truly amazing things. We played a little bit of something that always comforted her. So some of you who got early got to hear her dear beloved brother's voice. Her brother, Maury Maurice. Maurice's Hebrew name was Moshe. As you all know, Melody's name was Miriam. She went by Melody. And the wonderful thing about Moshe and Miriam is that they were brother and sister in the Bible too. And so that night, the night right after Yom Kippur, when she was taking her last mm -hmm. few hours on the earth. She listened to Maury's voice again, which always brought her great comfort. Mm -hmm. And then she turned to the Avinu Malkenu, the Avinu Malkenu of Barbara Streisand and the Avinu Malkenu, which we had just sung. And so I'd like to take a moment to share with you the Avinu Malkenu that brought her such comfort that we've just finished so recently. Avinu Malkenu Shema Koleinu Avinu Malakinu Chetanu Lefanecha Avinu Malakinu Chamol Aleinu Tovim, 
avinu molekeinu hadei shaleinu hadei shaleinu shana tova shana tova shana tova Avinu malakeinu, Avinu malakeinu, Avinu malakeinu, Chameinu vanenu, Ki ein bwanu mosim, Osei manu, Sidaka vachesed, Say manu sedaka vachesed vehoshinu avinu malakeinu avinu malakeinu avinu malakeinu chaneinu vaneinu. In Banu Mosim. Brought Melody great comfort to hear that on her way out of this earth. And Sue and I made a discovery. Sue was telling me about SMBK and how Melody had traveled to Japan to study, to immerse herself, to perfect her ability to transfer energy through her hands to help other human beings, to tap into the one, the one that we listen to when we say the Shema and realize that all is one, that God is one. When she went to Japan, we're gonna show you a picture of a yud, a yud that she saw on the banner in the place where we, she went in Japan. And she was quite surprised to find out that indeed the place where she went to study understood our symbols, understood the deeper t teachings, the mystical teachings, which when we look deep enough at each path and each religion, we find them to be universal. In fact, one of my Rebbe's once told me, if you find something in a path, in a religion that isn't in the all the other ones, that's when you're suspect, whether it's universal truth or a Boba Misa. I don't know if you can see that, but at the very top of the banner, there's a Yud. And the understanding in this group, the understanding that Melody immersed herself in and really connected to immediately. Was it through divine light coming through the Yud and the Yud Hey Vav Hey, the letters which we use for Hashem? Those we can see as a human being, if we can bring up that slide, so that they create the sense of a human. And Right after that, as, as we were talking, we realized that Melody passed right after Yom Kippur, right after the Nila service. There is a very, very special understanding of what's possible during Nila. And rather than me talk about it, I'd like to bring up another Miriam, amazingly enough, Miri. Coral through the, there we are. If we can bring up the sound. Of the cell, 
the bridge between starshine and clay. The Jewish mystics teach us that particularly during this time on Yom Kippur, Nila, that we're practically in communion with the uppermost level of the five different vibrations of our soul. The vibrational levels in order of ascendance are nefesh, spirit, biological life, to ruach, breath, emotional life, to neshama, soul, intellectual life, to chaya, life, transcendental life, to the fifth dimension of soul, yechida, oneness, essence. And while four of these vibrational soul levels are available to us during the different prayer times on Shabbat, and holidays, the fifth level, the highest vibrational dimension of yechida, oneness, is available to us only during nila. Yechida, oneness of past, present, future, oneness of all ourselves, oneness with all creation and with a divine intelligence at its origin. Get a hold of that. I believe that Melody did get a hold of that. It's been my experience that so many of us on a deep soul level know when we're coming into this world and know when we're going out. What a beautiful moment to be able to connect both traditions and to be able to choose the time one of the highest times when the mission that Melody fulfilled here on this earth, that of healing, that of reaching to others, that of inspiring their souls to heal each other, that she would choose this moment in our calendar to leave peacefully. The word for Ruach is spirit. The word for spirit is Ruach. And we sing one chorus now too. Melody's Ruach, Melody's Spirit. Ruach, Ruach, Ruach. encyclopedic grasp that Maury had of all things folk music. And she had that kind of mind. She could remember small things, little things from her childhood. She loved sharing them with others. So it's been my attempt so far, not just to talk about Melody, but to sing to her and to hopefully encourage all of you to open your hearts and lift up her spirit at this point to take her memory for a blessing and to follow it forward. I'd like to begin welcoming people to share stories, gifts, 
You see, Melody gave us so many gifts while she was here. She gave us the love of her family and her friends. She loved to dance. She loved Israeli dancing. She gave us the gift of song, the gift of her bright outlandish accoutrements and costumes and things that she wore and things that she encouraged others to wear. Overall, and most of all, she was generous and loving and caring. And I'd like to invite people one by one now to share not just their favorite memories, but the essence, the feeling that they had, that they gained from being with Melody, because this is a gift to everyone here. And remember, if you haven't signed up to speak, please uh, go ahead and, and raise your hand and we'll put you on the list. I'd like to start with cousin Donna Yesner. I want to talk about George. Um, Melody met her as a teenager. Um, and they both worked at the neighborhood library. And um, they fell in love and wanted to get married, but um, circumstances were such that they couldn't. And um, later in life, Melody and George um, hooked up again, and she was so happy. That's all she could talk about was George, George this, George that. And um, I smiled because he was the love of her life, and she never forgot, um, unfortunately, he died before she and he could get married. And, um, but even though when she talked about him and I didn't see her, I was on the telephone, I could just feel her, her face light up. Um, she truly loved him. And um, as a kid, she, just made me laugh. Um, she had her father's sense of humor and um, I will miss her. Thank you, Donna. Laughter, song, warmth. Melody had some hard challenges, but her strength to move forward when it seemed everything was against her. She moved here to California, I understand, from Terry, because she had very bad asthma and she needed the dry heat here. She was very young and very alone when she got here. And Terry said that she was sick most of her life, yet she made a career of helping people as an OT. And she found the love through George and unfortunately was able to go through the rest of her life with her. Donna, thank you so much for sharing. Naomi, her first cousin, Naomi Pollock. If you're here, please come and share your, your sense of melody and what you'd like us to hear. Okay, we're going to move on and then to the next person who's volunteered to be here. And I believe you, uh, that is Oren. There he is. Oren, the first time I've seen you, but enjoyed our conversation earlier today. Were yeah. you dancing during Hine Matov? Did you get up? Uh, <laughs> I was here for that part, yeah. Full disclosure, were you off your tuchus or you were sitting down? <laughs> I was sitting down. All right. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know what Melody would have said. Yeah. Well, Hine Matov, it's wonderful to um, meet you guys. And to be 
I'm uh, Terry here with my, my mother, Terry, is here with me, and also my wife, Tara. So we're very happy to, to be with you guys and to honor the memory of, of Melody. Uh, Melody lives in my heart as a joy, joyful soul, jovial, playful, perceptive, pioneering, loving, wise, healing. Um, she's guiding, counseling, a confidant, a mentor, and just someone who always felt like family. Um, Melody met my parents um, in the Israeli folk dancing community in the 70s uh, before I was born. And um, she, later she said that her experiences with Israeli folk dancing really helped her to um, in her healing from lupus. And um, she was very close to the family. And um, she liked to say that when I was in my mom's womb, that somehow she could communicate with me in utero, like she felt a really special connection with me all throughout my life, even before I was born. Um, and I love being with Melody and talking to her because she always reminded me of who I was to her. She always, she would always say things like, um, you know, you can you can be whatever you want in life. You know, she was always just so encouraging, and she loved to um, recall funny stories from when I was young, like uh, like the first time I uh, experienced Halloween. She 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 loved to laugh at at my first reaction to. Halloween that I came running, grabbing onto her leg, like, there's a ghost at the door. And she would, she would just crack up laughing, recalling that story of me being terrified of the ghosts at the door on Halloween. Um, I love to confide in her for her perspectives, for her stories of my family, just to get to know my family better through her eyes. Um, and her, she also had like a real no nonsense, straightforward way of counseling and guiding. So I loved opening up to her because she could kind of, I guess with her OT training and such, she could always help me to see things from a bigger perspective. And uh, she was also known in our family as uh, growing up as a healer. Whenever she would come around uh, with her light work, all the kids from the neighborhood would come to her for healing for their bumps and scrapes and bruises. And um, that really made a huge impression on me. I, I in experiencing um, the, the presence of the divine through the way that she carried herself and the way that she gave of that. Um, even though I was a young child, it, like suddenly it became possible to become closer to God in, in a way that I never really knew was possible. And that really set my life on a new trajectory. Um, all through my teenage years, I loved to confide in her. And every year on my birthday, I looked forward to having her take me to the dojo, the light training center and to eat out together. So I'm just so grateful to be together with you guys and remembering Melody and offering gratitude to her as a lifelong mentor, counselor, friend, and her joy and her wisdom and her heart of love and devotion will live on in this heart and continue to bless the world. Thank you so much, Oren. Thank you for sharing the joy and, and the depth of the gifts that Melody gave you during her lifetime and will continue to do as you remain in dialogue with her. Let's turn to our next participant. And uh, if Jacqueline is available, Jacqueline Aronson, Jackie. Yes, you're still muted though, Jackie. Hi, I didn't realize I was speaking. Yeah, hi. And um, at the end, Naomi will, um, if she can't make it, I'll, you can come back when everybody's done and I'll speak mm -hmm. for her through um, my phone. Okay. 
Um, yeah, sorry, I'm not prepared. Thank you so much for speaking, by the way, or conducting this. And thank you for everybody sh who's been sharing. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Um, my heart's a little bit um, unsettled right now. Um, emotional, I guess. Um, I, I'm a little bit at loss, at a loss for words. Um, normally I'm more prepared, um, when speaking about someone. Melody, um, I was mixed about speaking about Melody because I wasn't quite sure. I, I wasn't, it was hard for me to, to verbal, um, to come up with words to say, and I apologize that it's not coming up clear. Um, I loved Melody and I wasn't as close to her as, um, like most of my, most of my closer aunts and uncles or cousins, like, um, um, I didn't see her as often and, um, but she had a special place in my heart and she left a very big impression on me and I became, I, I mean, she's always been the same ever since I was a little girl and I always knew that there was this special bond that she had when she came um, with my mom, um, and she always came and she had these really kooky, I, they weren't tricks, they were just kooky ideas, and, um, I don't know, but there was always something going on, which was very much like my mother, and she was very similar to my mom, but, Something that I knew, and I didn't really understand it so much when I was little, but as I got older, I developed, um, and unfortunately this was when she was, um, her health was more um, fragile. And I got to understand her better. And I got to really know who she was. And I got to appreciate her. And something that I learned from her and really truly cherish was, she was such a giving person and she was so caring. And something with me was no matter what was going on in my life, whether I was at school as an adult or whether I was working in my career that I'd been at for decades or I was on a new adventure in my life, no matter what it was, she was there supporting me. She was there asking all these questions and she had a memory like there was no tomorrow. And she'd remember one thing after another, whatever it was that I was telling her about. She'd remember the next time I spoke with her and she'd ask me questions and she would know something about it and give me advice on it or give me an idea to move forward in that area. And she just always knew and always cared about me and would want to help me. And, um, and I felt like this tree that I was, like I would be going this way or that way, like a different branch. And she would always follow whichever branch I'd go off on and whichever tangent. And she would come with me and she would try and make me like, she would, Sorry, I know I'm kind of all over the place, but she would kind of go on that branch with me and try and blossom a flower. And I found that very interesting because people looked at her like she was sick. And often she was very sick and nearly dying, yet she could still find that time to help me um, blossom and give to me. And that's something that's so special. And I'm so forever full of gratitude for that. 
and cherish her and cherish her mom memory because of that. And um, I just, I adore her for that. And she just, she knew how to live even when she couldn't live. And it, it broke my heart seeing her so alive inside with a body that couldn't keep up with her at the end. And may she be in peace right now. And I just wish that I could live up to her strength. Sorry. And it's funny that my dog is licking me now because she just loved her dog, Sunshine, and animals. So anyway, thank you for letting me share. Wow. Jackie, if that's what you do when you're not prepared, wow. I mean, really, you took our breath away on this side. There was a couple of things that you said, you know, where you kind of, almost everybody, when I asked them for one word, the word that came up a lot was wacky and spiritual and caring and nourishing. And I'm sitting next to my beautiful lady who herself was an occupational therapist for many decades. They probably crossed paths. We haven't done enough Jewish geography to find out whether they knew each other or not. It's a big profession. And so many of the occupational therapists who got so deeply into people's lives and helping them, the natural progression was to learn how to do energy work and healing hands. There were many variations of this. The one that she chose who had a particular spiritual um, dimension to it. But make no mistake, this was a, an evolution that she took her life's mission so seriously she couldn't help but end up in something that was that connected. And it was lovely just to hear you um, think that you were on a tangent and yet your heart was wide open and you gave us so much so now. You know, I wanna say something about that. What a, what a wonderful spirit Melody has, has, not past tense. Just because it no longer inhabits a physical body it's surely going to be felt by everybody who knew and who appreciated her. And we often find that when someone leaves their body, they tend to give us more sometimes than when present. It's the laughter. It's the tears. It's the word, how it was said. These things we remember deep within us. Just like when you began, Jackie, and you didn't quite know where to begin, and then you touch those places that are deep within you. That's what makes each of us a better person for having spent time with Melody. Every one of us has a way of, of clearing out the clutter of a relationship and to get down for its true meaning to us. Now, now is the time. That meaning will shine forth for each of you. We are so blessed for such a wonderful woman to be in your life. Melody, healer, Melody, compassion. Melody, who reached out countless times. She was a wounded healer. She had more sores than most people have to carry in a lifetime. And yet, what was her response to sores and to struggle and to pain? She reached out to help each and every one of us. So it's my prayer on behalf of all of us that may Melody who gave selflessly, repeatedly, continuously of her hands, of her heart, of her light and her wisdom, now receive thousands of times the blessings back to her that she bestowed on every one of you and on everyone else during her lifetime. And to this we say, Amen. I don't want to put anybody else on the spot. I'm reading from a list that we collected of people we thought at least I thought volunteered. So may I ask Sharon, if she is ready to speak, please feel free to. Otherwise, I'll, I'll move down the list. Sharon Fleischer, Mastoon, good friend of Melody. Sharon's not here. Sharon is not in the building or the sanctuary. If Sharon does come in, Feel free to, to put her back in line. Mary Lafala Rogers, one of probably the, the people who know 
Melody from forever because you and Melody went to kindergarten together. I hope you can bring some of that kindergarten spirit along with the present day feelings that you have. Hi, I, I have um, something on my screen there. Um, can you hear me? We can hear you perfectly and you oh, look wonderful. Okay. You look so comfortable. When I, when I was five years old, I moved to public housing uh, where I met my two best childhood friends, Melody and, uh, Mary, and Bonnie Sue. Uh, I think she provided one of the pictures for today, but she's not with us t today. But the three of us were like the three amigos. And we were in kindergarten, first grade together. And years after, we, we would talk about what happened with Miss O'Mara or Miss Campion. And uh, it, one of the things that pained me, just one, when I heard that Melody had died, I thought, oh, we shared so much from so long ago. I remember going to one of her birthday parties that Maury was in charge of. And uh, he played statue maker where you ended up in some position, you had to hold still in that position. And I won the prize because I, I was just a shy little kid. And Melody was so different. Um, she was very lively and loud. Um, and she brought out some of that in me. Um, as an adult, she took me to places I'd never been before. One was a singles bar. And <laughs> that was... Um, Nothing phased her. It, it was <laughs> not an experience I really wanted to, to have again. But, uh, and the other was uh, we went to a pawn shop because she had in mind she wanted a certain ring uh, for some occasion. Uh, she loved jewelry, she loved color. Uh, and I, I really appreciated that, that part of her personality. And my kids did too. Um, you mentioned wacky and kooky. Well, there was something about Melody that my kids just found fascinating. And when I told my daughters that she had died, they, they were very sad, both of them, to hear that news. And they hadn't seen Melody for many, many years, but she made a big impression on them. Um, she was generous. She, uh, one time I had this horrible task. I was doing my dissertation. It was the days computers had cards and it had to be sorted. And uh, it was just a boring clerical task. And I had two little kids and not much time. And we went over to Melody's apartment. She was here for a short a time in the summer. And uh, kids got to use her pool and she helped me with that task. But she was that kind of person ready to pitch in and help. Um, the other thing uh, about Melody is when she moved to California and it was harder to keep in touch, she would when she came back to Minneapolis, but um, I was only out in California once and we had a wonderful time together. But talking on the phone, um, I felt like I did lose touch with her. And in these later years, um, it was hard to communicate. But she still would ask about my kids. She, she would even ask about my brother because he, he was part of the situation in the neighborhood too. And they knew each other well. And I knew Maury. Um, so I... I was sad. I, I went to Maury's service, sad to see him go, and she was grateful that I went. And uh, now I, I, I will miss her. I will miss the fact that I won't be able to call her and talk about 
things that happened over the years, but I have many wonderful memories to carry with me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. And thank you for being such a good friend and bringing all of your feelings here today. If Terry is here and she'd like to speak, there she is. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, perfectly. Yes. Okay, yes. because my, my speaker on my laptop doesn't work for some reason. You sound very clear. All right, great. Excuse Interesting. Me, Terry? Yeah? Terry, I'm sorry, I have Naomi on the phone. Do you mind if she switches places with you? I do. Not. Okay. I'm sorry. She she just she's at a place right now where she has power. Go for it. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, everybody. Another sister. Thank you. Okay, she's gonna talk through um a phone. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, go ahead. Um, this is Naomi speaking. Melody's first cousin once removed. Can um, you guys hear her? Okay. Yes. Okay. Can I be heard? Okay. Thank you. I'm not at home, so I don't have my computer. I don't have a code, whatever. I don't have a gift to do Anyway, Zoom. just talk. Um, Melody has influenced my life tremendously. More than, I don't even know my family knows it. I shared it with one other person this week. Um, she was my mother's favorite cousin. She loved, I don't know, favorite. I mean, she was very close because she, she was in Los Angeles and she's on a regular basis. So I felt that she was very close to her. And that closeness passed down to me. And so I felt close to her myself. Um, she'd spend time in our home and once she took me to her apartment, and that changed my life because all these arts and crafts things all over the place. I mean, bins and bins and, and bags, and we made a plastic, um, one of those beads, uh, uh, three pronged beads that fit together. She was an occupational therapist, and she had all of her tools there. And I fell in love with the idea of becoming an occupational therapist, and that's what I wanted to become when I grew up, just like Melody. As it turns out, um, I became a speech therapist instead of occupational therapist, but I always thought I would be an OT because of her. Um, the other thing that she did for me that that changed my life is that I always felt I was an alien. I felt that I don't believe, I, I don't belong in this world. I just felt very strange because things would happen to me and I was, I didn't feel validated in any way. No one knew what I was talking about as far as these perceptions and video clips that pop up in front of me. And she shared with me at one point that she has that and she has these perceptions and everyone thought it was like kooky, but I understood it because even though I'm in the science field, it happened to me. I mean, when something happens to you, you have no choice. You have to believe in it. And it kept happening, kept happening. When I was 10 years old, it was the first time it happened. And so that gave me the koyach, what's koyach? The energy to, the, the validation I needed that, I'm, that it's okay to have this happen to you. And I knew that it ran in my mother's family um, because of Melody. And by the way, I think one of my grandsons has it also. Um, in any case, one thing that she did in this, um, I'm going to have to go, but it was very difficult for me to have her to become pregnant. And when I did after nine years, it was a secret. I didn't tell anyone until I was seven months expecting. And I was in bed for that year or whatever. So I didn't tell anyone. No one saw me. No one knew. She called me up out of the blue and said, you're pregnant, aren't you? I go, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't want anyone to know. That was one of her kooky, wacky abilities. She was able to tell when people were pregnant. Um, I don't know if any of you know that, 
but that's something that she shared with me and she knew and she said and she would she went on to tell me how she knew what she saw um she was definitely a very ahead of her time person with all of her understandings with the energy and spirituality and i just hope she will forgive me Yashakoach, Naomi. Yashakoach. A difficult time, a beautiful sharing. And this is one of the great things about gathering in this way and sharing stories. I'm going to bet that a few people had no idea that Melody was like a dowser for pregnancy, that she could actually know when that was happening. People have amazing skills, amazing talents. And sometimes we compartmentalize our relationships with them. And it's only now when we're sharing as a community that all this comes together. Again, Yasha Koch for having the Koch to, hear, to be here today, Naomi. Um, we're gonna move back to Terry, if she's available and would like to, to be in, in there. No, that's Donna. Hi, Donna. Yeah, uh, you, there's Terry. Yes. Terry, yes. you are coming in loud and clear. All and right. you have the northern lights behind you. Yes. You're really tuned into the vibration. There, there, there's a, oh, my shirt is all crooked, I see. Okay. Um, there's a theme with Melody and her light. So I thought that was appropriate. Anyway, um, yeah, this is to Melody. I'll do it before and after. Those of you that have drinks. So I also didn't really, thank you. I also didn't really prepare too much, but I know I wanted to speak um, Melody, my earliest memory, I know you asked about our early memories, and I just remember we were in Minneapolis. Um, I don't remember how old I was. I was either 12 or 5. My dad is here. Maybe he can hold up his hand and say how old I was, if it was uh, in 72 or 65, probably 72. But Melody took my sisters and I um, out for the day. And, and you know what? I don't remember if it was all my sisters. But we were on a boat um, on Lake Minnetonka, and that was just so much fun. She was the fun cousin. I had such a hard time believing that she was my mom's first cousin because she was so young. I mean, she just seemed like she would have been our cousin. Um, but she, she was really young. She was a lot of fun. And then years later, she had to move to California. She stayed with us. And I remember thinking, I mean, I actually remember thinking, oh, Miriam's coming. She was still Miriam back then. Um, Miriam's coming. Mir you know, I was so excited that she was coming. And um, so th those are my earlier memories of her. We, we lost touch for many years, uh, gained touch again when my uh, sons had their bar mitzvah. And, and she was there and she was, so she was in and, in and out of um, our lives over the years. Um, and then my sister Judy found her. She, you know, out of the blue, I don't think any of us had been in contact. And she called me, Judy, and she's like, guess who I found? I found Melody. She's having her birthday and we should meet her for dinner. And um, sadly, she had had a stroke. Um, and I picked her up. She, she had already had a stroke, so she couldn't walk. It was very difficult, but we met for dinner. She loved going for dinner. Uh, she loved her sushi. I don't touch the stuff, so we never went um, for sushi. It was always Italian or something. Um, but that, uh, that, that visit to her apartment, I was almost going to say I was there with Naomi, I remember. And I was actually going to talk about it, how I knew that on that day my sister wanted to be an occupational therapist. And I haven't even talked to her about it. And here she is. Um, she spoke about it today. And I remember seeing a table that she had made. Nomi, do you remember that? It was, um, she made it herself. I don't know if it was petrified wood. I don't know what it was. Um, Renee said that she still has it, so I'd love to see it again. But I was just in awe with her talent and her creativity. It was, it, it was absolutely amazing. Um, regarding, I, I took some notes. Re regarding um, her memory, when I would talk to her, she would talk about things from, when she was little, I remember when I was young, um, her dad was really sick and he had Parkinson's. And I just remember he had a laughing machine that would make him laugh. And she was telling me how 
her dad loved me because I would tell jokes and it would make him laugh. I don't remember that, but she used to always tell me that. And that, that was always a warm spot in her heart that I could make her dad laugh. Um, but again, with her memory, she just, she just remembered absolutely everything. It was uncanny. I only know one other person like that. And that's my daughter-in-law's mother who also remembers just everything. So you have to be really careful what you say um, with, with Melody and, my my son's mother uh, my son's mother-in-law but um anyway at toward the end when she lived out here in the valley um i was the closest uh relative in terms of uh logistically living closest to her i live in the valley and i was there for her i was i i wasn't her caretaker sue and saul uh, Sue's late husband. I mean, they were there for her all the time. So Sue, I just want to publicly say thank you to you. But um, as the family member and um, the medical, I guess, power of attorney at the time, I was there for her. I would try to visit her, um, go shopping for her, buy her what she needed. Uh, just, just the family member that did that, because Sue did a lot of that. But I, I didn't, I feel really bad. And, and one, another reason why I'm speaking today, uh, because it's the last thing I can do for her where she can't give back. Um, I wish I was there for her more. And then when she moved to the South Bay, it was just really far. And I've probably only seen her a couple times in the last, you know, since she moved there, maybe two or three times. Um, and, and, and thank God Renee and, and Melissa were there to, to take over where I left off because she really needed people. And honestly, I could go see her for 10 minutes or an hour and what, whatever time I had to give, she was so thankful. She, she wasn't the kind of relative that say, wait, can you stay longer? I wish you would stay longer. Um, anyway, I, I wish I could have done more for her. I'm glad that I did give what I did give. And um, and her ass always hurt, really did. So um, Renee wasn't kidding. But anyway, um, again, if you have a drink, I'd like to uh, have this toast for, for Melody. I miss you, Melody, and love you. L'chaim, Terry. You know, Terry, this is not the last thing you can do for, but all, it was a wonderful thing. And, and, you know, we always say that at, at, at Jewish funerals, that, you know, this is a gift that, that can't be given back, that, that can be repaid. But it doesn't stop. This conversation doesn't stop. And this is really why I make it the focus of these gatherings. Thank you. It, it, it would be a shonder not to continue to talk about Melody and to carry her work forward. And so that's why I asked every one of you, what is your legacy? What, what? When you're talking. Uh, there's a few other, there's some cross deck there. Um, what is the legacy that she left in your heart? I think you all know it. So every once in a while, when you get together, and even with a new person, tell her stories. Look at the world through her eyes. And I guarantee you that this will not be the last gift. One of the things you said, which I, I wanted to share, because I spoke to so many people through the online forum gathering, and, and we couldn't possibly put it all in. I reached out to St. Paul, Minnesota. I have many friends in the same folklore world that, that Maury was. And I got to tell you, Maury was so respected. And when you said, Terry, about the, the memory that Melody had, every one of them told me the same thing about Maury. I <laughs> remember the slightest detail about the most minuscule stuff and bust you with it. Um, <laughs> so... We're going to move. Everybody is, is giving praise to Sue. Be, be, um, I'd like to bring up Sue and, and, and of course, Saul, rest in peace, uh, just recently left us. Sue, if if uh, you feel the koach and, and the, the moment, please come yes. and take your place. Thank you. I want to say thank you to everyone. And we met, I'll tell you how we met Melody. She was friends with my brother-in-law. They all went to Mahikari and then uh, SMBK together. And she came to a birthday of the twins, my husband and his brother, Barry. Saul and Barry were twins. And that's how we met her. But she was very helpful during Barry's illness. 
Mary had to have surgery of the brain and she was there for us and she went to visit him many times. We had to leave the hospital and we call her, please, can you go and check on him? We can't come back <laughs> because he was in UC UCLA and we were in the valley. So it was quite a drive for us to go, keep going back and forth. But she went and represented us and she was very dependable. You ask her something, she'll do it. And she gave him light. She made sure people came from the SMBK to give him light. She made sure he was taken care of. She was a very special lady. And she's happy and bright. She always makes people happy around her. Every time you see her, she has that big smile. And her eyes will smile. Her face will smile. Shine. Maybe it's the holy, the divine light that comes through her. She, she shines with light. So, and she was that way. And later when she had the stroke, she will, we, we had the time. So we went to help her, why not? She did a lot for us, it's our turn. And uh, thank God she passed this too. Thank God she's over all that. I enjoyed singing with her many times. We listened to music together and watching happy movies together. And that's my memories of Melody. And I, through her, I met all the friends, all these people here. I had no friends, and there I am. I have all my friends through, through Melody. And I thank you all for being there for her. Many times, I was a weakling. I couldn't protect her well. And I said, Melody, I don't know what to say or do. Please call your cousin, Terry. She knows how to fight. <laughs> She, Terry stood up for us, so cute. She's a little girl, but here she will go standing up for us and telling people off and doing what's necessary. Oh, God bless you, Terry. And Renee then took over. And Renee, thank God for Renee and her family. The girls are Renee's daughter, Renee's grandson. They went and visited, made Melody happy. I only could visit her twice because it's an hour and a half drive from the valley to where Melody is. And I'm afraid to drive freeway, so I have to have my daughter drive us. So thank God for her. God sends the right people at the right time to help each other. I think this is the whole thing. And thank God for Judy and Jackie and Debbie, all of you. Thank God for you, Sue. Thank God for you, Sue. Yasser Koach, I know so we say in our tradition, may her memory be a blessing. But there's no doubt her memory is a blessing for you yes. and will always be. And, and she you, had, like you said, her strong memory. She remembered everybody's phone number. How did I know everybody? I didn't know them. <laughs> After her stroke, she started dictating, call this and call that. And she knew the numbers by heart. I can, I can hardly remember my own number. <laughs> and that's how well, I got everybody. We have a surprise speaker. Renee is, is prepared, ready and prepared. Like we say on Passover, I'm ready, prepared to perform the mitzvah of the fourth glass of wine. So Renee, if you would come to the, uh, to the camera and we'll, and we'll finish up and then we'll, we'll do a few more things because we have to do some light work and we have to do some prayer work at the end. Hello, Renee. Hi. Nice to see you. Everybody was talking about the light, you know, about her light and what she did also all the time. But if you look at the photos, the tall, tall, good looking guy when she was in the hospital giving her a glass of water, that was Nicholas. I remember when he was nine months old when we were in a restaurant, she is giving him light. And she always tried to give him light when he went to the convalescent home to visit her. But two other things, when I had a bat mitzvah for my granddaughter at the Habat, she was trying to give people light there. And at my, we came back to my house afterwards and she was giving people light in my garage. And when I lived up in San Francisco, she called me up and said they asked her to speak at Stanford. I said, oh, I, I thought she was kidding me. And she drove up, she stayed with us, and she went to Stanford the next day and had uh, lectured a class that had something on religion, on, on religions. I was so proud of her. So she did lots of stuff. That's all I have to say is God bless her. Thank you very much. And Phyllis, uh, were you asking to speak now? I saw your, your hand was up and also Judy. <laughs> 
I am. I just had to jump on the band board a little bit. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not very presentable, so I don't have my video on. I just had met uh, Renee and Melissa over the phone. Um, um, they want me to show my video. <laughs> All right, um, here I am. <laughs> so um, there's some other people that were on this call that um, that uh, I recognize. So I'm just saying hello to them. It's actually been quite a while um, since I've seen Melody and since she's been in my life, but I'm actually from Minneapolis. Um, we share a mutual friend, Sharon Fleischer Mastoon. Um, she was the surrogate mother to me. So when I moved to Los Angeles, actually uh, from the Midwest in 1994, um, uh, Melody, uh, Melody, sorry, I'm hearing sorry, it. Sorry. Sharon connected me to her friend Melody and Melody just welcomed me with open arms. I'm also um, in the same type of light group that Melody was in and I've been in it <clears throat> for years. And um, one of the first things that she did, um, I remember it's just a fond memory. Um, we went out to lunch together and I was all into, I still am into wanting to eat meat. It has to be organic and healthy. And he said, well, how can we have a hamburger and eat it? And it's, it's not organic. How, how can you trust it? You know, and I'm really young. I'm like, you know, in my 20s back then. She goes, honey, it doesn't matter if it's organic or not, because we're just giving the hamburger the light, the light and it'll be great. <laughs> you know, and I'll never forget that. Um, but she, um, Anyway, she was in my life. Uh, we were in each other's life for a long time and sadly lost touch. So I'm just really grateful that um, um, I met, that Sharon reached out to me to then I could meet Renee and Melissa and um, have conversations with them and help out wherever I could. Um, for that. And I think Melody has definitely touched all of us in her own special way. And she'll continue to do that um, as she, you know, trends, um, as she moves along. Um, I know that she'll be with all of us. So um, may her memory continue to be for a blessing. And thank you for allowing me to speak. Thanks. Thank you so much, Phyllis. Thank you. And, uh, if there's anybody else now would like to go, please raise your hand. We're going to conclude otherwise with Judy, and, and uh, Judy has a special reading to do after her share. Thank you, Judy. Hi. Okay, you can hear me now? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, I just wanted to say quickly, uh, you know, there was something really special about Melody, aside from everything that's been said, is, well, first of all, it's crazy that no matter how sick she was, <laughs> she would ask me questions. She'd call me up and she would ask me questions about crazy things that I have no idea how she even remembered it was in passing and she would ask me these questions. So when we talk about her memory, I mean, even to the day, I, I, I mean, in her sickest, sickest times, she remembered the, the tiniest details of things. It was really cool. Um, there was absolutely zero dementia in that woman. <laughs> um, she, but the one thing I wanted to say that touched me very much is that she told me, my mother passed away, but she told me that my mom, who was her first cousin, was her idol. And from her whole childhood, all she wanted was to be just like my mom. And actually it's really funny because it took, I mean, I've always known she was very similar, but it, 
in reading all the things that everybody was putting together for her, I was like, oh my gosh, this could have just been the same person as my mother. She really was so similar to her that it just, I just wanted to say how much that warms my heart now to see, have, have really realized how similar they really were because I miss my mom very much and Melody loved her more than anything um, in her whole life. Uh, aside from George, of course, <laughs> but, um, and um, it just, it means so much to me because my mom had just as difficult time and also was wacky just like her and just so similar. So it just warms my heart to um, have all these people write about Melody, knowing how much Melody loved my mom and idolized her. And then it turns out she's just the same. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, I would like to read something. And you know, I, I'm going to ask you to hold up because a bunch more hands, and I'd, I'd love to do it at, at the end of this. So of hold course, on to that. And it was something that, that uh, Rabbi Alan Mahler did. So naturally, one of the hands that went up was Rabbi Hillel's. And I was hoping that they would take a moment. So Rabbi Hillel and then Imelda, if you would come in and, and share with us. I'd like to say, as I begin, uh, I heard what everyone said. Uh, you know, I have five daughters, and there were a few more pregnancies, but I heard what was said about Melody, and I have to tell you, I have a question, because with all those pregnancies in our families, not once did she tell me, I think you're pregnant. Um, when I attend a funeral or think of death, my mind actually goes the other way. I think more about life and what it means to live and what makes for a good life. And I found something just today uh, written by Joshua Roth Liebman. He was a rabbi in Chicago and Boston, and he had written a bestseller actually called Peace of Mind that for 58 weeks, it was on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, it was still on there when he died. He lived during World War II and part of what I'm gonna read something he wrote that I said I found today. And part of, uh, that time, a lot of the last years uh, were during World War II, and it had an impact on what I'm going to read. And he died at the age of 41. And this is the quote. And while we live, we should try to make each day a year as far as beauty, nobility, and a warm sense of brotherhood are concerned. In a time when there is so much cruelty abroad, we must generate the oxygen of love to keep the soul of the world still breathing. Religion should summon all of us to deepen the quality of life as a compensation for the diminution of its quantity, to treasure each other in the recognition that we do not know how long we shall have each other, to make life strong and brave and beautiful as our answer to the forces of death abroad in the world. We must make up for the threatened brevity of life by heightening the intensity of life. Our very understanding of each other can serve to deepen life even when we cannot lengthen it. And then he goes on to say, we can trust the universe beyond time also recognizing that as part of wisdom, not to remove the veil from before birth or after death, but to live fully, richly, nobly here and now and make possible society where other people can so live. I think I can summarize everything that he said in something that's my personal philosophy and I hope you'll all take it seriously for your own lives. And that is, 
what we should judge a life by is, is the world better off because we went through it? And I think we can say about Melody, and we heard about the things she did, the training, her working with people, how she brought life to people, laughter, that the world is a better place because she passed through it. Yasha Koach Reb Hillel, Yasha Koach. For those of you who don't know, Yasha Koach means loosely translated, may the force be with you, may you go from power to power. And I noticed that Judy is, is recording. And I want to reassure everybody, all of this will be recorded. So those who couldn't make it, or if you had dropouts or whatever, you'll be able to hear it again. Um, peace of mind was on my father's bookshelf. I, I saw it from the very time I was a little pusher. A great, great, great timeless piece. Thank you, Reb Hello. I, I want to thank um, you also because the reason I'm here is you said, could you could you find somebody to sing the El Malay Rachamim? And um, the more I found out about Melody, the more I really wanted to be here and honor her and raise her up in this way. And we're going to do that in a few minutes. Let's go to Imelda now. Hi, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Everybody's hi. muted, so they won't answer you. Just watch oh, okay. my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hi. Um, well, I, I met Melody like in the 70s. I'm from Curacao, a little island in the Caribbean. And I used to work in, a, in Hollywood in a famous drugstore, medical drugs. And she used to come there to pick up her medicine. And I used to work right behind the counter there in cosmetics. So while she's waiting for her medicine, she would come there and we chat and we talk and we got to be very good friends. So then she took me to the, the um, Israeli dancing. So I loved her so much. So I used to do all the Israeli and people used to talk the, the Yemenites that thought I was a Yemenite, you know? I said, no, no, I, 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 I'm not, I can speak Israeli. So I start uh, learning a little bit Daraba, you know, and stuff like that, you can say thank you. <laughs> and so, and then um, I, I used to be a flight attendant. So then I left it for a year or two. And then I got the job again. So I moved to the East Coast. So I went with Piedmont Airline. And then I lost her. I, I got, uh, I couldn't get in touch with her anymore. So after how many years, like five or maybe longer year, I came back and she had started with uh, the light working. And I found her for some reason, a very miracle way. I gave her the wrong number, but anyhow, she still found me and she called me. She said, but you give me the, the, the wrong, call. but anyhow, she found me. She came right away to my house. She said, I found a wonderful, wonderful organization. I said, whatever it is, give it to me, show me. So she gave me light and I felt like a big chain fell from me. I said, I want to do this. So I used to drive from Orange County all the way to Torrance every time to learn, to say, I want to learn this. I want to learn this. I'm a member now for 30, over 30 years, you know, and we've been friends forever. She came to my wedding in Las Vegas. She taped the whole thing. Sue, Sue has the tape. Um, thank you, Sue, for help being there for Melody. I wish I was there because of the COVID. I was in LA, but I couldn't, we were not allowed to go and see her. I wish I had seen her before she passed. I spoke to her in between many years. It's a long story, but I know it's just a few minutes there. So we, 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 we very, very close. And I'd like to thank Sue again. Thank you again. And thank you, Melody. May you be with the light forever. And thank you for allowing me to find the light also, the, light, the divine light and path. Thank you again. And may you rest in peace. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak. And I just, uh, on the 1st of October, I retired from the airlines. 
I flew for 50 years. <laughs> I just retired. I'm happy with that. Thank you again for the opportunity. Mazel tov on your retirement. <laughs> 50 years. 50 years. <laughs> Thank you. 50 years I've been flying. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to return um, if we could back to Judy to offer another rabbi's offering. Rabbi Thank Ellen Muller. Thank you, Amal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh, bye bye. bye, -bye. Are you there? You are there. Okay. Maybe I need my glasses. If you have printed out the uh, prayer okay. book, not not you, but everybody else, I'm I'm covering for your moment to get your glasses. Oh. oh. Uh, it's on page seven. And if you don't have page seven, it's okay, because now Judy has her glasses. Uh -huh. Hamakom yinachem etchem batoch sha'ar aveli tziyotzi. You know, actually, we were looking for when all that's left is love on page seven. Perhaps the numbers are wrong. The one that's before that. Uh, hold on. What Judy just read is what we say at the end of the service, usually. That was page seven, sorry. It. So that's what I have is page seven. I'm so sorry. So let me see if I can find what it is that you want here. Okay, so um, what is the one you wanted me to read? When All That's Left Is Love by Rabbi Alan Mahler. Where is that? I, I don't see where that is. We will return to it later, but first a word from our technical advisors. You look it up. If you find it, go ahead and chat me. Otherwise, we'll try and send it to you in the chat. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. uh, what I'd like to do now is to... I got it. Is to welcome Judy back once again. <laughs> Just FYI, that's page 13. Uh-huh. Okay. When All That's Left Is Love by Rabbi Alan, Mo Alan Muller. When I die, if you need to weep, cry for someone walking the streets beside you. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands and souls touch souls. You can love me most by sharing your simchas and multiplying your mitzvot. You can love me most by letting me live in your eyes and not on your mind. And when you say Kaddish for me, remember what our Torah teaches. Love doesn't die, it's a good. When all that's left of me is love, give me away. Before we do the El Malay Rachamim, before we do the light work, before we raise Melody's spirit and offer our prayers and God's blessing, if we have a dog that's... Uh, sharing i'm sure that melody would enjoy that but if we can mute that one that would be good that would be um, me oh okay well you can go ahead and mute now there we go um is there someone no okay so um what i'd like to do because some of you i'm, I'm sure didn't get to see this first of all i'd like to thank uh our incredible technical expert in the background joanne fink who took over from somebody who is now in the middle of whatever disaster is happening in Louisiana and within three hours got all of this together. So we want to both thank Joanne, who is the incredible artist of Zenspirations.com, also does a lot of grief work. And I want to thank each and every one of you for putting up with all of the, the spits and spurts as we know happened. But what happened today was absolutely, absolutely lovely. A sacred space was created and the good news about being perhaps here together is that we don't have to um be in a hot cemetery and we have much more patience and we have much more connection in seeing each other's faces and being able to share these things so 
I'd like to turn to the ancient Jewish prayer for the dead, the El Malay Rachamim. And it is uh, going to be on, hopefully, on the screen in a moment. Before we do that, let's take a look once more at Melody. The El Malay Rachamim is one of only two prayers, as Reb Hill, I will tell you, that's absolutely required during a Jewish funeral. The purpose of the El Malay Rachamim is to make sure that Melody's spirit is received in a beautiful and loving way. In times of COVID, when we are either unable or challenged to perform what we call Shmira, the guarding of the soul and, and the body before the funeral is, is taken place. I just recently participated in a virtual Shmira for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, where many of us all over the nation and the world sat watch for her. And so too, we now can come together as a community, as a kahal, as a sanctuary of friends and loved ones, and put all of our light, all of our heart, all of our souls into this intention for Melody's soul to be wrapped up under the wings of the Shekhinah. What I'd like us to do in our homes is to alternate the words of the ancient Jewish prayer for the dead. And perhaps we have it from the... Uh, uh, from the that we could put it on the screen. These, this is the Hebrew for it. Um, otherwise, if you have printed out your ancient Jewish prayer for the dead, I'd like to do it in this way. I will read, and I'd like the men to join me in your homes, not muted and muted, of course. And also, Dina will read the alternate paragraphs so that we're each listening to each other. It actually be at, at the front. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Joanne, very much. And so we're going to alternate. And with melody in our hearts. 
and in our souls and in our intention, in our kavanah, we now begin the El Malay Rachamim first in English, for it is important to be able to pray in the language that you understand. And so because all of us understand English, we're going to begin there. And then we'll do the traditional El Malay Rachamim prayer. However, some of you will be surprised at the melody because it was written by a Magid in Minnesota. And I selected it purposely to honor both Maury and Melody, who would have been very pleased to have a, a folklorist from Minnesota add the melody for El Malay Rachamim. Together the men, compassionate one, remember now the precious, precious soul of Melody Bernstein, who returned to the realm from which she had originally come to spend time with us in life. May her soul be entwined with your great spirit, the source of all life, and in the warmth and serenity of your wings. May her spirit be joined with the spirits of our ancestors, Sarah, Abraham, with the spirit of her beloved brother, Maury, with those of her parents, Louis and Cecilia, with, the, with that of her beloved George, and with the spirits of other great men and women who now dwell in the bliss of paradise. Source of all blessing are you, yea, beneath all life, breath of all life, breath of all life who created melody and graced us with the gift of her presence in our lives. You chose to bring her into being on our plane. You chose to call her back to your realm in your own mysterious way. We thank you, creator of life and death, for the time we had with our beloved Melody and ask you to comfort us now for our sense of loss in our lives and for our somber encounter with our own mortality in this moment. Renew in us the faith that in your unending love, death is but a journey of our spirit from the finite realm of physical being to the infinite realm of your eternal embrace. For the soul of the human is a spark of the divine. Wellspring of blessing are you, yeah, breath of all life, who is with us in life and in death. El Malay Rachamim, Shochem Bamramim, Hamsei Menuchan, Nechona Tachat Kanfea Shechina, Lenishmat Miriam, Miriam Bat Sipora, Yehuda Leib Halevi, Miriam, daughter of Louis and Cecilia. Translation, let's read this together. Great power of compassion, who dwells in the realms of the high, bring forth true repose beneath the wings of your presence to the spirit of Miriam Bat Sipora, Yehuda Leib Halevi, Miriam, daughter of Louis and Cecilia. Ose shalom bimramav, hulia ase shalom. Shalva nechama v'koach zikaron edna, alenu v'yalkol yoshveo tevel. Together we say, the translation, you, who creates harmony in the realm of the high, also bring to us harmony and peace of mind, consolation and strength of nurturing memory upon us, upon all who walk, swim, and fly across the earth. Bring now the strength of your memory of melody, bring the consolation, bring the sweetness and the light, bring the energy that she shared with you and bless her on her way as I offer the El Malay Rachamim. <laughs> Please mute yourselves, everyone. Male Rachamim, Shochem Bamramim, Chamsei Menucha Nechona, Tacha Kanfei Hashchina, Bemalot Kedushim. Oh, Tehorim, Kizoah Hawakia, Moschirim, E 
Eit mishmat Miriam bat zippor v'yehuda leib halevi. Shalach l'olama. B'gan eiden tehei. Menucha Rahamim, Yanuchu b'shalom amish kevo b'shalom V'nomar ha-meim We turn to the mourner's cottage on the next page. And together in our homes, you can pray from your heart. You can use the words on the page or use the words that are in your soul. This translation is from a, an old colleague of mine, Rabbi David Wolf Blank. The Mourner's Cottage, the great essence will flower in our lives and expand through the world. May we learn to let it shine through so we can augment its glory. We praise, we continue to praise, and yet whatever it is we praise is quite beyond our grasp of all of these words and all of these symbols that point us towards it. Oh, we know, and yet we do not know. May great peace pour forth from the heavens for us, for all Israel, for all who struggle through truth. May that which makes harmony in the cosmos above bring peace within and between us to all who dwell on the earth and let us say together, Amen. Turn to the next page. And if it is your tradition to rise for the mourners cottage, then please feel free to do so. And if you'll go to the, um, the page in the uh, prayer book. Yitkadal, v'yitkadash shemei rabah. Together we say, help us, O Lord, to embrace the enduring. B'almat divra kirute, v'yamlich machute, b'chayechon v'yomechon, v'chaye dekol beit Israel. Amen. Teach us the value of time so that we don't squander our days. Protect us from ourselves as well as from others who seek to harm us. Give us the strength to fight off depression and cynicism by helping us affirm our belief in the ancient mysteries that have been our comfort, our strength, binding the generations one to another. Le'ela min kol birchata v'shirata, tushbechata v'nechemata, de'amiran b'alma v'imru, amen. Inspire us with a sense of the sacred. Protect us from a numbing dullness of the soul. Yehei shlama raba min shemaya v'chayim alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'imu amen. Remind us always to be nurturing to others, to feed the hungry, 
to clothe the naked, to heal the sick, to comfort the brokenhearted, as our beloved Miriam Melody did during her time here on this earth. May the memory of our loved ones and our beloved Melody always, always, always be an inspiration to us. May the Father of Peace, the Mother of Peace, grant peace to every heart in mourning, in grief, and let us all say together, Amen. And so we come to the end of what has truly become a sacred space for all of us to be in, to share from the heart and to bless memory and to bless Melody on her way. On page five, we have a traditional thing that we say to the bereaved as they walk between us in two lines exiting from the cemetery. The Hamakom Yenachem et Chem Bitoch. And Judy said, did such a good job of reading it before. I'd like her to read the Hebrew to us now. Oh, I already did it. You guys didn't hear me? <laughs> okay, I'll do it again. Hamachom, Hamachom, Yinachem et Chem, Betoch She'ar, Avile Tzion, Yerushalayim. My friend Rabbi Ann Brenner, who's done some tremendous work in, in the world of grief and comfort, offers this, and I offer it to you all now. Hamakom Yenachem, the holy place of comfort. We invoke this on behalf of those who grieve. It's also a name of God. It points to the holy mystery that is healing. Because when we're stricken by grief and by loss, we really can't imagine how we will recover wholeness. I know that there's some of us here today, I've spoken to you, who are in the throes of grief. And it is true that it is very difficult to imagine how you will become whole again. We can't know. Healing comes from a place we don't yet know. And if we're willing to admit, just to admit that there are things we may not know, then there's a possibility that the unknown can reach out to us and carry us to a promised land of healing. This healing is not going to look the way you envision it from the place in which you currently stand. But if, if you can open yourself to the possibility of the unknown, then there is a possibility of discovering Hamakom Yenachem, the holy place of comfort in which your healing can be found beyond just words of comfort from others is to open to that possibility that yes, it's possible I might receive what I need to be to become whole once again. You and all of us have done a great mitzvah for the family, for Melody, which as Judy said, cannot be returned today. And so I'd like to ask us to um, break into small groups before we leave because to if we were at a, a uh, cemetery, we're at a, uh, a, a place where we were gathering, you would certainly be talking to each other for a few minutes. So I'd like to leave you with a final Hasidic nigun. All the world, it's just a narrow bridge. Just a narrow bridge. Just a narrow bridge. All the world, it's just a narrow bridge. Just a narrow bridge. Just a narrow bridge. And above all. Of 
above all is not to fear not to fear at all and above all above all not to fear it all all haulam kulo gesher tsar meo gesher tsar meo gesher tsar meo kol haulam kulo Gesher tsar miyod, Gesher tsar miyod, Gesher tsar miyod. By the kindness and the compassion, the wisdom and the uncanny abilities, the spirit, the joy, and the willingness to express all those things in this face of such physical adversity. May all of us take and drink deeply from the example that Melody has left with us and take the time now to be with each other in groups and to our final blessings. If we were together, we would have an egg, we would have a meal together, we would break bread, so this time we're just going to reach out to each other in groups. It has been my tremendous privilege to honor Melody in this way. I again want to thank everybody that was able to assemble this in such short notice, particularly Melissa and Judy who stood by, Sue, Renee, Nick, all of the, the Aronson sisters, everyone who was there present for her and who helped to guide me to put the service together. Most especially, I'd like to thank on such incredibly short notice, Joanne Fink, who is with us from Florida, running the back end. And believe me, this was quite the uh, production with all of the videos and audios and slides and stuff. So again, thank you, Joanne. Thank you, everybody who came from Melody. Let's go into our breakout rooms. You, I think you'll actually be able to choose uh, the people you'd like to see. This really has progressed. So Joanna, if you, am, you lead us there. I am not sure that we can choose. I can ah. assign people manually or I can assign everyone automatically five participants per room and you can get to know some of Melody's other friends and family. Uh, and if there's someone you particularly want to visit with, put that in the chat and I will do my best to relocate you, okay? Very good. So I, I wanted to share that I did not have the privilege of knowing Melody and your stories made her come alive for me. And I think she's somebody I really would have felt a heart connection with. So thank you all for sharing and for allowing me to be here tonight. Okay, so there's a couple. I will do my best. I'm going to create the breakout room so you can all start visiting. You will have to, I believe, unmute yourself when you get there. And then I will come back and try to put people together who would like to be together. No promises, but I'll do my best. And on the way out, whoop. you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy. When skies are gray, you'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Please don't take my sunshine away. In case you didn't know that, Joanne, that was her favorite, favorite song. <laughs> I did not know that. Okay, I have found people that I'm relocating to different rooms, so give me just a moment.
you know, before you do that, I just saw a question in the in the chat from Terry, and it said, "Who will psychotic for her because she had no immediate family?" There's nothing in God's great universe that prevents anyone who felt close enough to honor and love and respect Melody's soul from not saying Kaddish for her. So I encourage anyone this year and anyone at any time who feels that she wants to, or he wants to keep the memory alive, say the Kaddish for Melody. Thank you.